everybody. Welcome to the mini beginner's crash course to Elasticsearch and Kibana. My name is Lisa Jung and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. So this is a series of short videos for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In previous episodes, we talked about how Elasticsearch gets you fast search results at scale. Today, we'll talk about how to measure the relevance of your search and cover concepts like precision, recall, and score. So before we get started, let's do a quick recap. If you're a developer working with data, the Elastic Stack is a great tool to have on your belt. The stack consists of three parts, Elasticsearch, Kibana, and integrations. And with the stack, you could take data from any source in any format, then search, analyze, and visualize in real time. Today, we'll focus on Elasticsearch, which is the heart of the Elastic Stack. And this is a search and analytics engine that powers a lot of the apps that you use today. For example, if you've ever searched for a restaurant on Yelp or have searched for groceries on Instacart, Elasticsearch is the engine that is powering that search. So search is an experience, and no matter what you're searching for, you expect fast and relevant results no matter the scale. In previous episodes, we talked about how Elasticsearch gets you fast search results at scale Today, we'll talk about the relevance aspect of the search. More specifically, how we measure relevance when we search with Elasticsearch. So we search for things on a daily basis, and as developers, search is a lifeline, right? And whether we're fixing a bug or building a certain feature, we go straight to the search bar and hope that someone posted solutions online. And it's really frustrating when you're searching for an answer and you're not quite getting what you're looking for. And that is what relevance is all about. When you search for something on your app, you want results that are directly related to what you're searching for. Which brings us to the question, well, how do we measure the relevance of our search results? Now, the two factors we'll focus on are precision and recall. Let's delve into this a little bit more. As a quick review, we know that Elasticsearch is a search engine. It allows us to store, search, and analyze data. And it stores data as documents, and documents that share similar traits are grouped into an index. When you search for something, Elasticsearch retrieves relevant documents, then it presents them as search results, which is highlighted in orange here. On this slide, we have two diagrams depicting the same thing. On the left, we have documents grouped into an index, and the same thing is shown in the diagram to the right. So the yellow rectangle represents your sample index, and the gray dots are the documents contained in that index. Now I'm gonna use a diagram on the right to explain precision and recall, but before we do that, let's go over some terms real quick. When you send a search query to Elasticsearch, it retrieves documents that it considers relevant to this query. And these are the dots in the white circle, and these are documents that Elasticsearch sends back as a response. And some of these retrieved documents are what you expect to see in your response. These are known as true positives. Now you probably had an experience when you searched for something and some of the results were not relevant to what you're looking for. These are known as false positives. And these are irrelevant search results that were retrieved by the search engine for some reason. Now let's focus on the dots in the yellow region of this diagram. And these are documents that were not returned by the search engine. And some of them are truly irrelevant to the search query and were correctly rejected by the search engine. These are known as true negatives. Now among the rejected documents, there may be relevant documents that should have been returned in the response. These are known as false negatives. 
So earlier, I've mentioned that precision and recall are used to measure the relevance of a search engine. And the term precision has to do with the dots inside the white circle. And these are documents that are returned as search results. So precision is calculated by true positives divided by the sum of true positives and false positives. So what precision tells you is what portion of the retrieved data is actually relevant to the search query. Now recall, on the other hand, is calculated by true positives divided by the sum of true positives and false negatives. So what recall tells you is what portion of relevant data is being returned as search results. So precision and recall are inversely related. Precision wants all the retrieved results to be a perfect match to the query, even if it means returning less or no documents. Whereas recall focuses more on quantity. It wants to retrieve more results, even if the documents may not be a perfect match to the query. Now the dilemma is that we want to present the really relevant items but we also want to retrieve as many results as possible. So as you can see, these two factors are at odds with each other because if you want to improve precision, it might cause a decline in recall and vice versa. So let's recap real quick. Precision and recall determine which documents are included in the search results, but precision and recall do not determine which of these return documents are more relevant than the other. This is determined by ranking. So when you look at your search results, you'll see that the most relevant results are at the top and the least relevant are at the bottom. And this ranking or order is determined by a scoring algorithm. So each result is given a score. Ones with the highest scores are displayed at the top whereas ones with the lowest scores are displayed at the bottom. Now, a score is a value that represents how relevant a document is to that specific query. And a score is computed for each document that is a hit, and hits are search results that are sent to the user. So the higher the score a document has, more relevant the document is to the query, and it's gonna end up higher in the order. Now, there are multiple factors that are used to compute a document score. For this episode, we'll only focus on term frequency and inverse document frequency. So let's break this down. When you search for something, you type in a search query in the search box. An Elasticsearch looks at the query and pulls up relevant documents, also known as hits. Then it calculates a score for each document and ranks them by relevance. So how does this happen? Well, let's talk about how term frequency plays a role in calculating a score. Here we have a search query, how to form good habits. And this query is made of multiple search terms. Now Elasticsearch will look through the return documents, then it'll calculate how many times each search term appears in a document. This is known as term frequency. So if a document mentions search terms more frequently, Elasticsearch assumes that this document is more relevant to the search query and assigns a higher score to that document. So let's say we wanna look at the frequency for the term habits. And here we have two documents that mention the term habits. So look at the first document. Now in the field description, the term habits appears four times. Now look at the second document. In the same field, the term habits appears one time. So in this example, the first document is given a higher score and is placed higher in the search results. Now, when we calculate a score based on term frequency alone, this will not give us, a, us the most relevant documents. And this happens because term frequency 
considers all search terms to be equally important when assessing the relevance of a document. So let's look at the search query here. We have search terms how and to and form and good and habits. Now, not all of these search terms will help you determine the relevance of a document. For example, the first four search terms are commonly seen in many, if not all, documents. If you look at the hits, then at, at the documents highlighted in orange, these documents like how to form a meetup group or good chicken recipes, they do contain some of the search terms. But these documents are completely irrelevant to what we're looking for. But because of term frequency, if these commonly found search terms were found in high frequency in any of these documents, these documents are going to end up with high scores, even though these are irrelevant to the query. So Elasticsearch offsets this with inverse document frequency. So with Elasticsearch, if certain terms are found in many documents in the search set, it knows that these terms are not useful at determining relevance. So when it goes through all the hits, it'll reduce the score for documents with unimportant search terms, and it'll increase the score for documents with important search terms like habits. All right, so we just went over how we measure the relevance of a search and discuss concepts like precision, recall, and score. And this content is an excerpt from the Beginner's Crash Course to Elastic Stack Part 2. So Part 2 is a full-length workshop where I talk about the relevance of a search, how to add data to Elastic Search, and how to fine-tune the precision or recall by writing Elastic Search queries. So if you prefer the full-length workshop format, check out the link shown on the screen. And the link is also included in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch in Kibana.